What's going on, everybody? I'm back with another Prize Picks NBA Player Props video. This one going to be breaking it down, everybody, guys. Two, six pick flexes. We have a beautiful one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gamer tonight. Uh, did turn into a nine gamer actually here. This Warriors Utah Jazz game did get um, canceled, but beautiful nine game slate. Bunch of value to be had. I'm going to be giving you guys two six pluck. Uh, two six pick flexes all are going to be fantasy score props so you should have plenty of time to get these in uh, before tip off uh, as soon as i drop this if you got the notification bell on if you don't have the notification bell on make sure that you uh turn it on right now so you don't miss any future content that i upload hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content that i upload if you're wondering why i keep giving you guys six pick flexes on the channel for these prize picks videos as of late one, I'm actually playing them myself. Two, I'm setting them to my VIP members. And three, it is the optimal way to play. And the reason I'm playing these six mana flexes is because long term, if you're able to hit at a 60% hit rate, for instance, on six mana flexes, you're going to be getting a 66% return on investment as compared to if you're hitting at that same hit rate on two mans, you're only going to be getting an 8% return on investment, right? So if you're someone who's locking in good value, high quality picks in five and six pick flexes on price picks, that is going to be optimal as... 60% hit rate, you're going to be getting a really solid return on investment, guys. The best of the best in sports betting and professional sports betting, if you just Google professional sports bettors, are typically hitting in the mid-50s like 50s as far as a percentage on their bets. Um, I don't know. like If you're just a genius and you hit your picks at 80% hit rate and you, and you only play two mans, you know, keep doing what you do and get rich. But uh, um, if you're someone that's struggling with the prize picks, you're learning, you don't really know how to succeed long term, you've been kind of struggling at, you know, you keep having to deposit, etc. Uh, this is a great chart to be looking at. This is a great mindset to have. Uh, and this is a great channel to tune into. I'm going to help you out. If you're looking to get access to every single one of my picks, as soon as I place them, the premium content is going to be wrapped the KJK DFS VIP member package. I don't cover just prize picks. I cover prize picks, underdog fantasy, better picks, sleeper picks, and parlay play in that package. So you're going to get access to all my tickets as soon as I place them. I also do teach you how to play optimally on all the, all those apps as well. They differ, right? So like, for instance, underdog fantasy plays out 6x uh, on three picks as compared to prize picks where they only play out 5x so you can play three picks on underdog and they are optimal for instance. So uh, I've got a ton of knowledge on those apps, ton of knowledge on the industry, ton of knowledge on how to succeed at this stuff. And I'm gonna try to help you guys for free in this one. Once again, two six pick flexes. The reason I'm giving you them is because of what I just explained. Last night we went four and two, like it stinks, but long-term if you're able to hit at that hit rate, as I just pulled up the chart, you know, you're gonna be profiting money. If you're going like four and two or better on every single six pick flex that you place, uh, eventually you're going to get that you know six man sweep it's just law of averages so just keep grinding make sure you're locking in good value uh let's talk about it today let's get into it i gotta get this video out to you guys and like i said we're going to be covering a lot of picks so i will warn you right now there's a possibility some of these get taken off the board there's going to be a total of 12 picks guys so i'm giving you 12 picks for free uh more than i could put up on both hands if some props get taken off the board, I'll explain why they might possibly get taken off the board. Uh, you can just mix and match these. You can also just pick your favorite. You don't have to run the exact tickets that I am running. However, I am running them. I will be sharing them with you to show you, you know, proof. I'm sending them to my members. I'm playing these myself. As a matter of fact, I have exposure to these in two tickets now because I wanted to make sure I locked them in the current lines before I release the video to you guys so that I am ensuring that I am backing my plays with my own money. Uh, you know, put my money where my mouth is and um trying to help you guys out for free i get comments all the time as far as uh you know why would i join the vip if you're not winning me picks on the channel for free that's fine uh, that's fair i'm up to the challenge let's try to win you some money so um if that's what i gotta do that's the goal let's win you some money today let's talk about it like i said we have a ton of picks so uh, i might be a little bit of a a sped up breakdown here just because I got to get through this all right. So uh, the first ticket, we're going to be going with all overs. So we'll talk about those. And we'll go game by game as we always do. The first game I want to discuss is going to be the San Antonio Spurs Boston Celtics game. So this is the game where I'm talking about how there might be some props taken off the board because we have a bunch of injury news on the Boston Celtics side. Uh, guys like Kristaps Porzingis, Drew Holiday, Derek White are all listed as questionable. Now, I do think there's a solid chance these guys take a rest tonight. Why? Because they're taking on the San Antonio Spurs, which is one of the worst teams in the NBA. They're young. 
Still in the come-up, still learning. 16-point spread. I think this might be a time where Boston looks to take advantage and rest some of their guys. Um, and if they do, it should help the game stay close. It should also give a huge usage bump to some of these Celtics guys. So I'm kind of playing this ticket assuming that some of these guys get ruled out. I really hope that you guys can tail. Um, it's only going to be one guy on the Celtics side. So if they fantasy score props get taken off the board, guys, uh, just keep a lookout leading up to the tip-off. Hopefully they take them down, but then they repost them. And if they do... Uh, I have a feeling I'm still going to be wanting to back the props at where they're at. So on the Spurs side, we're banking on this game staying close. We need there to be guys producing. And there's two guys that I want to be talking about on the San Antonio side. It's going to be Trey Jones at the point guard position, who's played 30 and 32 minutes the last two times out. And Victor Wembanyama, who played 27 minutes last time out after playing in the low 20s. They've been kind of giving him some load management. But his fantasy point per minute production has been through the roof. This game has the highest projected pace on the entire slate with a 101 pace metric. So this game is expected to fly. Look at the fantasy point per minute production for Trey Jones. He's putting up 0.88 fantasy points per minute. Uh, that's right under a, you know, a fantasy point per minute, essentially. And he is, once again, guys, playing right around 30 minutes a game now. So that's going to put him in the upper 20s, if not into the 30s in fantasy score on most games. Victor Wembayama's fantasy point per minute production is ridiculously good. The only thing left stopping this guy is the limited minutes, but he leads all centers in the entire slate, more than Anthony Davis, more than Alperin Sangoon, 1.64 fantasy points per minute in the prize fix fantasy scoring format. He's been absolutely ridiculous. I touched on the injuries. The other guy I like on the other side of this game is going to be Jason Tatum. Uh, this is a fantastic matchup for him. The Spurs, once again, don't play really any defense. His fantasy point per minute production trails only Giannis and LeBron James at the power forward position here tonight with a 1.29 fantasy point per minute production rate for him. Do expect it to skyrocket even higher here once again with the injury news. If we do see a Drew Holiday, a Derek White, a Chris Epsterzing is ruled out, like I said, I think we do probably. Even if they aren't ruled out, I still like these plays, guys. It's just going to be a little added bonus. Got them projected over regardless, and I think that if these guys get ruled out, the usage and the projections is going to skyrocket more. So we're doing a little bit of a game stack here. Two on the Spurs side, two uh, and one run back on the Celtics side. And that's going to be kind of the theme of this first ticket. We have two game environments that are really expected to fly. The only thing is we needed them to stay close. If you've watched my content before, uh, or if you were in my Discord, you've probably heard me say this before. I don't try to predict blowouts. There are going to be games with a 16-point spread that turn into a blowout. There are going to be games with a 4-point spread that turn into a blowout in the NBA throughout the season. You will learn that very quickly if you are placing props on this fantastic, what we like to call National Blowout Association. Blowouts happen. You can't predict them, but my model and my projections are weighing in every single other thing under the sun and even the blowout risk, the spread, the pace of the game, all that stuff is factored into the projections that I'm talking about. So um, the first three guys, right? We need this game to stay close. It's going to be Trey Jones and Victor Wembenyama that I think keep it close here tonight. Wemby has cleared this in each of the last five. Trey Jones has cleared this in each of the last two games where we saw those minutes creep up into the 30s. I think they continue to do so here tonight. And uh, I think the matchup gets a lot easier for them. Shall Kristaps, um, Derek White, Drew Holiday be ruled out? Drew Holiday and Derek White are two of the uh, top on-ball defenders in the entire NBA for guards. If they're out, it's a big upgrade to Trey Jones. And then, of course, for Wemby, if Kristaps Porzingis is out, it's a big upgrade for him, right? So that they don't have that same height matchup for him. Um, should have a much bigger advantage. And then, of course, the game should stay closer. So that's kind of what I'm banking on here. I'm not banking on it. I still like it regardless, guys. It's just a little bonus. Like These are things that you have to kind of take a risk on at times throughout the NBA season. And like I said, even if, for instance, um, the Celtics are a full go, I still have these guys projected over with the current uh, you know, projected lineup being in it. All my projections weigh that stuff in. If the guy's a game time decision, it's still factoring him into the rotation, and then it's going to adjust. And then, of course, we're going to see some of these usages uh, go up even more. So... Trying to take advantage on a discount, I think, you know, once the Celtics news comes out, Tatum could get bumped up all the way to like 50 or something. So um, try to lock this in as soon as you can once this video drops. Hopefully you got those notifications on. So those would be the first three. And then it's going to be kind of the same theme here uh, in this next game. That's going to be a really good game environment if it can just stay close. We do have a big spread once again. I'm not in the business of predicting blowouts. I don't care. 11 and a half point spread here uh, in favor of the New Orleans Pelicans. 
So this game, you know, 11 and a half point spread. It could turn into a while. But if it doesn't, I have these guys projected over. It's all factored in, right? So we just need it to stay close. And by the way, this is going to be positively correlated because we're running guys on both teams. So if the game stays close, they're all going to get their uh, full allotment of minutes. So that's kind of the goal here with this ticket, right? So Lamella Ball on the Charlotte Hornets side, absolute fantasy point per minute monster. Uh, as far as his per minute rates on the season, he's putting up 1.38 fantasy points per minute. Did get hurt, has been back from injury. Uh, as far as his first two games back, he played 27 and 30 minutes respectively, right? So we saw him play 27, got ramped up to 30. You look at his games prior to the injury, um, he's going to be playing a lot more minutes than that. Expect him to get up near the mid-30s to upper 30s like a Miles Bridges or Terry Rozier. These are the top three guys in this rotation by far. Lamelo, Terry Rozier, Miles Bridges. So he's just been working his way back from injury. That's why we've seen those minutes be down. But if the minutes ramp back up, with his point per minute production, 1.38, he can absolutely crush his fantasy score prop where it's set here tonight um, for an over. And I have the same thing on the other side with CJ McCollum and Jonas Valanciunas. The Charlotte Hornets have been absolutely terrible versus the center position, something that really stuck out to me uh, throughout my research here today. They are giving up the second most fantasy points per minute. Uh, I'm sorry, second most fantasy points per game to opposing centers in the entire NBA, trailing only the Washington Wizards. And uh, Jonas Valanciunas grades out really, really well in this game as far as his minutes per game lately in this rotation. You can see has been a little bit up and down at times, 19, 28, 26. But in general, he's going to play in the mid-20s. And when he's in there in this matchup, he should absolutely crush uh, with, like I said, this Hornets team really struggling versus center position. Uh, JV is a great fantasy point per minute producer. Sam QB said for CJ McCollum, they continue to have him in the low 30s. I have him projected in the mid to upper 30s like every game. He's putting up 1.15 fantasy points per minute, and he's playing in the mid 30s. It's going to put him up in the mid to upper 30s every game. I don't know why Price just continues to price him in the low 30s, but I'm not complaining. And then uh, as far as Mr. Jonas Valanciunas, his fantasy point per minute production, once again, fantastic. 1.26 fantasy points per minute. The minutes are down a little bit, but he's typically playing in the mid 20s. He's putting up 33 fantasy points per game. I do expect him to get up into the mid, if not upper 30s in this matchup, like I said, against the Charlotte Hornets team that's been really terrible um, against opposing centers. So... Um, for this ticket, like I said, we got a little bit of, uh, some big spreads, but the game environments look really great. If the game just stays close, I'm not in the business of projecting blowouts guys. So, like if that's your thing and you like to just guess which games are going to be blowouts, go for it. My personal advice is to not try to guess which games are going to be blowouts. And if it turns into a blowout and you have unders, it's going to help you. Um, if it doesn't turn into a blowout and everyone avoids the props and you're on the over, such as these ones I'm discussing, you know, you're going to be the one that's winning while everyone else is standing on the sidelines. So it's just kind of, these are the choices we have to make, right? Uh, but I do have edge in every single one of these props. Wemby actually got bumped down, which is going to help you guys even more um, tailing these picks because it's even better value. Um, but I'll pull up the ticket here right now just to make sure that I show you guys that I did lock this in. My final three picks are going to be uh, Lamella Ball, CJ McCollum, Jonas Valanciunas. Um, and I like these. These are going to be my overs, and then we'll go through another ticket that's going to be unders. Now, feel free to mix and match these if you do choose. Like, if there's certain picks you don't like on this first ticket and you want to mix and match with the second ticket we're going to go over, you could certainly do that here. Uh, but we're going with the over on Trey Jones, over on Victor, over on Jason Tatum, over on Lamella Ball. Over on CJ McCollum, over on Jonas Valanciunas. I like all these overs. Uh, and just to prove that I did send it in to the Discord, here you go. Um, that is my ticket. So, you know, I am playing these plays. And then I will show you on my screen um, that I did lock it in myself as well. I can only put up the $40 now, but I did the $40 that I can now do. And uh, you can see... Submitted now. Keep in mind, you, you got an even better line on Victor now. He's been bumped down to um, 42.0, which is fantastic if you're tailing. So we're going with the over on Trey Jones, over on Victor Wembyama, over on Jason Tatum, over on the Mella Ball, over on CJ McCollum, and over on Jonas Valanciunas. Now, I know that I'm kind of going through, through this like crazy today, guys, but I got to get this video out to you. So um, just some final touches. I have JV in the mid-30s. They have him only at 29.5. Charlotte's giving up over 37 fantasy points per game to centers. As far as CJ is concerned, um, got him projected in the mid-30s. We talked about that, right? How he's playing 
like mid thirties and his fantasy point per minute production is 1.15. I don't understand why price picks continues to have him in the low thirties, but I'm not complaining because he's going to put up like 35 every time if he plays those minutes. Um, Lamelo ball working his way back from injury. He's been fantastic when he's getting the full minutes, got him projected in the mid forties. Um, I mean, he's had some games. He's put up like 58 fantasy points per game oftentimes this season. So uh, his ceiling's massive compared to where the line's at. Wemba Yama, same thing. Ceiling's massive. Tatum, we talked about the uh, injury news with the Celtics squad, right? So we might get a little bonus here. Um, if Porzingis, Drew Holiday, Derek White, any of them are out, or if all three are out, that's going to be a nice little bonus. And I do think we could see that happen. And then obviously we're getting some positive correlation. Um, just naturally... We want this game to stay close, right? Because the I mean, 238 and a half total is massive, guys. If the game stays close, this is just a fantastic game environment for these guys. And uh, obviously, my projections weigh all this stuff in. A big reason why we have these guys projected over. So uh, that'll be uh, ticket number one. Ticket number two, we're going to be talking about a bunch of unders here, right? So we got the overs out of the way. Um, and then the second ticket, we're going to be talking about all unders. So... This one might not be as fun. We're talking about some studs with some inflated lines. Um, and these guys have much higher ceilings, but the base projection is too high, so I'm going with some unders. They can absolutely go over, but this is the game we play on prize picks. So the first guy we're going to talk about is going to be Bam Adebayo in this Miami Heat game. Um, he's a guy taking on a Toronto Raptors squad that is looking a whole lot different now. There's going to be no Pascal Siakam uh, in this lineup, so going to be playing a little bit bigger. Bam continues to have an inflated line on prize picks like every single night, it seems. Uh, he is a guy that's going to play decent minutes. Jimmy Butler returned last game, though, and played 40 minutes. Now, with Jimmy Butler on the floor, obviously that's going to cut into Bam Adebayo's usage. He doesn't have as much usage. Don't expect him to get quite as many fantasy points. Look at the on-off court stats for when this entire team's together in this starting five. Tyler Hero, this is only a 15-minute sample size, but it's been Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, uh, Nikola Jovic, as a matter of fact, leads Bam out of bio um, with this starting lineup. So Bam is a guy that has a good ceiling. Once again, can go over, but I have his base projection going under here. Price picks has his line too inflated. We'll talk about that as we go along here. I got to get this video out to you guys. Second guy is going to be Trey Young taking on our Orlando Magic squad. We once again have a little bit of an inflated line. We look at the fantasy point printed production for these guys. Trey Young putting up 1.32, um, 36 minutes per game. That's going to put in like right around 40 fantasy points per game uh, in the price fix fantasy scoring format. 229 total. Not the greatest up game, uh, up tempo game environment. The same can be said for the game we talked about with that Raptors game, right? Um, the Raptors and Heat have the second lowest projected pace on the slate as far as the Atlanta Hawks or Atlanta Magic. A little bit faster, but Trey Young is a guy that is just once again posted a little bit too high. We'll talk about that. Um, Donovan Mitchell, the third guy, a little bit too high with an inflated line. And it was, as we continue along here, the last two are actually going to be another game environment, really good. Anthony Davis and Luka Doncic with some inflated lines here. So, um, speeding up a little bit of the explanation. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I have partnered with daily grind fantasy. I've been doing a lot of fantasy score props on the channel uh, they have a fantastic optimizer. If you are interested in the Daily Grind Fantasy Optimizer, you can get 25% off with my code, KJKDFS. They already hooked me up with a promo code now, so you can now get 25% off on your first month. But one thing that I do want to kind of bring up here is that the optimizer does agree with me on some of these picks today. I will be the first to tell you I don't always agree with the optimizer on fantasy score specifically because I do have some models and, and some systems that I use for the fantasy score prop. Uh, but outside of that thing, outside of that, guys, this tool is fantastic and the data points are fantastic and it brings in every single sports book, um, you know, across the industry and then gives you the implied odds of the prop to hit. And anytime that the fantasy score is lining up on this and in my projections, I get really excited, right? Um, the non-fantasy score props, this tool has been fantastic at helping me beat bumps. And the fantasy score props, once again, is another um, data point that we can look at on the DGF optimizer. So specifically Donovan Mitchell, I just want to pull up here as an example to kind of give you guys a preview of this, right? 
What this is doing, it's pulling in odds from Pinnacle Sportsbook, FanDuel Sportsbook, DraftKings Sportsbook, BetMGM, Caesars, etc. It's giving you a total projected fancy score on each one of these sports books. So based upon the odds of, you know, assist, rebounds, points, all that stuff baked into the sports books, they have millions and millions of dollars under this stuff, right? Uh, the Daily Grind Fantasy Optimizer is bringing that in for you guys, and it's giving you the exact total on where they have this guy projected, right? So Donovan Mitchell's a stud. There's no denying that. Very good at basketball. But you look at his odds on sports books, DraftKings sports books has him at 54.1. Caesars has him at 52.7. And Bovada has him at 54.2, right? PrizeMix has him set at 54.5. So it's showing us that the line is just a little bit too inflated. And in this case, my projection model agrees with it as well. So you want to be using as many data points as possible. Daily Grand Fantasy provides a ton of different data points in their optimizer. They also do have a fantasy score prop tool. Um, if you go to the tools section, you can actually look at the top fantasy scores as well. But uh, Point being, this is a tool that I use a ton to be bringing in sportsbook data, beating bumps on non-fantasy score props, and it also does help when the data is matching up on my fantasy score projections, uh, such as it does on Donovan Mitchell today. makes me like it even more. Uh, so I do want to give a shout out to them. DGF, if you haven't tried out their optimizer or another data source that I do use, you see me talk about all these different data sources throughout my videos, right? Like the starting lineups and all that stuff. Um, the fantasy point per minute production, that's all baked in. So my projections, um, another data source here for you guys is the uh, DGF optimizer. Um, so nice little bonus there that they're agreeing with us here today. And uh, we will kind of check off the list here as far as the top guys that I'm going with once again here. Inflated lines, right guys? So these aren't going to be quite as fun, uh, but I do have them going under, um, going under here today. So one's going to be Bam. Uh, two's going to be Trey Young. And I'll do a quick little review before I uh, wrap up the video as to exactly where I have them projected and kind of why I'm liking it like I tried to do before. Just I'm giving you 12 picks today, so it's a lot to cover. I've already done all the research on the back end for this guy, so uh, trust me, there's been uh, a lot that's already gone into these picks today. Uh, so one, two, Trey Young. Three is going to be Donovan Mitchell. We just talked about that. The GGF optimizer agrees with me, which is fantastic. More data points, the better. He hasn't gone over it in um, four of the last five. He did go off against this Milwaukee team last time, but we're once again, guys, talking about these this prop. These prop shots are really good at setting these lines, so we got to take the edge where we can get it. So you can see um, the other thing I like about the optimizer is it actually tells you like the exact percentage that your projected hit. I think people have very unrealistic expectations on hit rates when they're trying to succeed at this stuff long term. You can see like this is a great prop um, on the optimizer and it's giving it a 51.5% chance uh, to hit. Like it's one of the best fantasy score props under as I was seeing it pop earlier. And you know, you can see it's a little bit over 50%. That's where you're, that's the edge in these props apps. So I like that, how that puts that into a visual for you guys. Um, it kind of helps on my end to explain like that's kind of the edge you're looking for on these props apps, right? You're not going to get like a crazy at edge a lot. A lot of times if you're getting like a 55% edge on a prop, it's really good. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm going over all these projections, all that stuff throughout these videos. Um, that's just a visual representation of like where it's at. So um, those are going to be the first three. And I think I skipped over one actually. Sangoon is the other guy. Have him going over under a ton here today, guys. Um, I actually did already send this into my uh, VIP as well. There was some serious juice trending um, downwards on his props earlier. So I'll pull this up. Uh, Prize picks earlier had his points set at 22.5, his rebounds 9.5, and, and his PRA set at 36.5. There was juice on the under on every single one of these on Pinnacle. Uh, you can see this was a screenshot I took earlier. These odds probably would have changed. 161 on the uh, 22 and a half points, 153 on the under 36 and a half PRA, and then on the under rebounds, 145. He got bumped in every single category. So I'm on a lot of Sangoon understay on other apps before these bumps. I'm sure he's probably been bumped like pretty much everywhere by now. Um, but I didn't mean to skip over him. He's the other guy that we're going to be including in this unders ticket to go along. Uh, with this, and I like how the sports books are agreeing with us. Once again, the more data points, the better. And the last two are going to be in this game with Luka Doncic and Anthony Davis. Um, once again, just two inflated of lines here, guys. I did my best to explain and break this down, but I'm giving you a ton of 
uh, picks today. Just trust. I've already done a ton of research. Um, I do have these guys just not quite getting there, okay? That's the bottom line. Um, trying to give you a bunch of free value here today on the video. Trying to break it down as much as I can, but 12 picks. I'm giving you a ton of value. It's just like it's a lot to kind of cram into a video for explain explaining it all. Uh, but I will do a quick little um, rundown as far as exactly where I have these guys projected here. Once again, just to explain to you, like, guys, the edge is going to be, like, kind of minimal because PrizePix is really good at setting these lines. So when we're targeting the overs and unders, it's like, okay, we've got him off, like, three or four fantasy points, right? We could be targeting a ceiling where we think he's going to have a ceiling game. I talked about that last video. Or a floor. Some, so these guys have ceilings and floors, right? So, for instance, Bam, I've got him projected in the low 40s. They've got him in the upper 40s. So that's why we're taking this under, right? That's factoring in matchup, pace of game, spread, yada, 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 all that stuff. All the stuff I talk about, it's all baked into a projection. Um, so he's the first guy I have going under. His floor is all the way down to 32. His ceiling is all the way up in the 50s, right? So if he has a really bad game, he could be down in the 30s. We're going to crush. We're going to be happy with that. He could have a much better game, though. But obviously... Everything I'm discussing, I'm expecting him to have a little bit more of a down game than where the line's at. Trey Young, uh, got him projected in the low 40s. They've got him in the upper 40s, right? Same thing. Donovan Mitchell, I've got him projected in the low 50s. We talked about that. Pulled up the DGF optimizer. Same thing I have him projected for. More data points, the better. That's fantastic. Sangoon, I pulled up my uh, Discord. There's a bunch of juice on his unders today, so might as well uh, add the under on his fantasy to the list. Uh, the New York Knicks are only giving up like five field goals per game to opposing center starters. It's really not the best matchup for him. I've got him projected in the upper 30s. He's in to the 40s on the fantasy score, right? His ceiling is 50 plus. His floor is in the 30s, right, guys? So we're aiming for four games. All these guys can go over, but all of them can go way under. I have the edge on the under. That's why we're doing what we're doing today, okay? Um, I hope this makes sense. Like, Prize Picks is very good at what they're doing. They have these guys' lines set at a certain line for a reason. They want it to be right on point with where they're expected to go. They're trying to middle it the best they can. That's how they make money. Um, Luka Doncic, I have him in the low 50s. Prize Picks has him in the upper 50s. Anthony Davis, last one. I have him going out there and getting in the low 50s. Prize Picks has him in the mid to upper 50s. Okay. So. Uh, a lot to get through in this video today, but just keep in mind, guys, obviously, all the guys that we're taking overs on are capable of going under. All the guys that we're taking unders on are capable of going over. But what we're looking for is the biggest edge on the prize picks board in the fantasy scoring department, which is oftentimes going to be, you know, two, three, four fantasy points. Okay, so that's how we uh, find our edge. That's how we win money. Uh, a lot of studs in, in, in this under here which can be a little bit scary, but if you if you follow my community page, guys, we had a sweep over on Sleeper yesterday. Um, my last sweep two days ago, full six-man sweep on Prize Picks NBA was all under fantasy, so a very similar story to what we're talking about in this last script, and they're all studs. Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, Damian Lillard, Giannis. I took the under, as you can see on the screen, was able to turn 40 into 1,000. So I know it can be dicey, but I have systems in place with a lot of data, um, all reliable sources, all going to be very helpful uh, and making me get picks, all props with good value and then providing it to you guys, my VIP members, uh, etc. I have a lot of systems in place to get this stuff, you know, detected as soon as I can. Get the value detected, lock it in. Um, so, once again, just to show that I did send this in the Discord and prove it, I sent these in the last tube and I warned my VIP... I have exposure to these plays in two tickets now because I wanted to back them to the public in two final tickets to show you guys, like, I'm playing these, okay? So um, this will be the second one. We're going with the under on Bama Bile, under on Troy Young, under on Donovan Mitchell, under on Alperin Sangoon, under on Luka Doncic, and under on Anthony Davis. Once again, these lines are just a little bit too inflated. These guys can all go over. They're studs, but they can also go way under. And their base projection, right, their base projection is, like, Right in the middle, kind of factoring in the matchup, the pace of the game, the over-under, all that stuff we talk about has them going under. So we got to take the edge where we can get it. That's what we're doing here today. So uh, 12 total picks, guys. Feel free to mix and match these all you would like. Um, once again, just to prove that I did place these, this is the ticket with the all-unders. Under on Bam, under on Trey Young, under on Donovan Mitchell, under on Alperin Sangoon, under on Luka Doncic, under on Anthony Davis. 
if you don't like some of these picks and you want to, if you like some of the picks in the other ticket, you can certainly feel free to mix and match these, right? So this is the other one that I'm going with. Uh, if you want to tell the exact tickets, certainly do so. Obviously, I am playing these. So over on Trey Jones, over on Victor Wembanyama, over on Jason Tatum, over on Lamella Ball, over on CJ McCollum. Six man flexes. Once again, the reason we do that, guys, is long term. If you're able to hit a 60% hit rate or higher, even if you hit a 55% hit rate, you're going to get the best return on investment. Um, as to any, if you're hitting at a 55% hit rate, you can see you're in the red on anything outside of five and six man flexes. So uh, this is your best chance to really profit on these apps. Um, you know, with giving you a little bit of room for error to learn. If you're not someone that's like a professional, you're still learning. Your hit rate's not above 55% hit rate. Uh, you definitely want to stick to the five and six man flexes. Keep be responsive with your bankroll. Don't go too crazy. That's what I'm teaching you guys. That's what I'm teaching the VIP. And then obviously, hopefully, the key is you guys tailing these, cashing in tonight with me. Um, yeah, man. Obviously, I would love to win. I would love to win everyone on the channel money, win everyone in my VIP money. And uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the content today. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. The notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload. It is free. It takes two seconds to do. That's good. They help me out. I'll be helping you guys out with these videos for free. All prize picks. Uh, all NBA season long, I should say, on prize picks. So uh, feel free to mix and match these picks. Got 12 for you. A bunch of free value. Hit the like button on your way out the door. Would be greatly appreciated. Best of luck tonight. Thanks for tuning in. And we will see you in the next one.